information about this course. The course contents. This course is going to cover the foundations of x86 assembly programming. It will take you from virtually knowing nothing to the position of a beginner. However, a very solid beginner. Let's discuss the contents of this course. It begins with the basic structure of x86 architecture, and then we continue to introduction to FASA. Next, we are going to talk about assembly foundations, which is really the core of what you have to know about assembly language. We are going to cover arithmetic, branching, signed operations, bitwise operations, memory, strings, and finally, subroutines and the stack. Then we move on to the next chapter, which is called Becoming Independent. In this chapter, we will learn about using the x86 manuals, debugging with WinDBG, and finally, interacting a little bit with the Windows operation system. Some technical details, maybe for the more experienced students in this course. We are going to study x86 assembly language in 32 bits protected mode over the Windows operation system. The assembler which we are going to use is called FASM, which is the flat assembler. The course exercises. The exercises are carefully tailored for every lecture, which means that every lecture has a few exercises exactly for those subjects. The exercises are designed to allow you to lift yourself up by yourself. The real learning happens during those exercises, and they are going to expand your skills a little bit at a time. Therefore, you must do the exercises. There is really no way around it. I heard much of the debate about the exercises. Someone might say, well, I'm a very fast learner. Watching the lectures probably would be enough for me. Well, I say this is one philosophy. But let me ask you this. Would you attempt to learn swimming, for example, just by watching lectures? The answer is, of course not. And why not? That is because if you want to learn how to swim, you have to get wet. Maybe some other question. Would you try to learn tennis from a book? No, of course not. You have to get out there and hit the ball with the bat. You also have to miss the ball sometimes and make some mistakes. Then you adjust your technique and learn. Exactly the same is true with programming. You cannot expect to be a programmer just by watching lectures. You are going to have to open your text editor and jot the code down. You have to try many things and make many mistakes until you finally get it and make your program work. This is part of the deal, and this is what you need to become great. In the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how many facts you know to quote about assembly language. It only matters if you can actually write the code and make it work. This is why you should do the exercises. The exercises could be downloaded for free from my website. If you do have some experience, some previous experience with assembly language and you just want to improve your skills, maybe you don't need to sign up for this course. You can probably just download the exercises and do them yourself. You can even send me a question if you need help. Student requirements. This course is made for absolute beginners. The requirements come down to the following. Being able to understand the English language. Being able to add numbers. For example, do you know how to add 15 plus 7? If you do, you are going to be fine. 
the most important requirement is that you should be determined to succeed because this is not a short course. There is much work to do. No programming experience whatsoever is assumed. I don't care if you have never programmed before. You will be able to do this course and do it successfully. That said, having some experience could be an advantage, mostly if it is in a language like C, C++, or Pascal, something pretty low level. Even though this course is made for beginners, it does contain more advanced subjects, if you are interested. If you are more experienced, bonus exercises are waiting for you in every exercises section. System requirements. This is what I require from your computer. First, you are going to need a Windows operation system. It should be one of the following. Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8. In fact, even earlier Windowses will probably work, but I do recommend those versions just to make sure that what you see in the video will correspond to what you have on your computer. Next, we move on to the processor. Of course, you need to have a processor of the x86 architecture, because this is what this course is all about. Both an Intel or AMD processor will do. A note to our friends on the Linux operation system. The assembler which we are going to use, which is called FASM, works both on Windows and on Linux. However, the exercises were written for the Windows operation system. Therefore, they will not work for the Linux operation system. If you still want to do this course, you could open a virtual machine on your computer and install Windows inside of it. Then you can do the exercises inside the virtual machine. If it turns out that many people want to have Linux support for this course, we can probably do something about it.